Vandals believe the Vandals are coming from right underneath this tape. Those backpacks are important. Those aren't the only items you can donate. You can barely feel the turf underneath your feet. It's almost as if they're walking on thin air. They need Mike Shomer, who uses a variety of techniques to help them adjust to the real world. So I decided to ask a couple people, how exactly should I get the best bang for the buck? Despite the air of accomplishment, officials say there's still more work that needs to be done. At Perry St. John's, Brandon Goldner, Fox News. You're kind of in a zone. You forget that there's people watching you. You're kind of focused and concentrating on your guns and shooting your targets. What Chris Iverson, or better known as Trigger Tilly, doesn't mention is she's using a gun designed 130 years ago, and she's dressed like a cowgirl. You know, I've always loved cowboys, and I've loved shooting. And so when I found the sport on TV and I found out there was a local club, I knew I had to do it. Welcome to the 2012 North and South Dakota State Championships of Cowboy Action Shooting. Yeah, you heard right. Cowboy action shooting. It's a competition where more than 150 people dress up in old western attire and shoot 1882-style guns. If you're accurate... That's a lost high, right over the hump. And quick... You can win. So I decided to see if I have these traits. Oh, yeah? Go like this. Okay. 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 Yep. And you can tell and by that confused look on my face that I've never up. fired a gun in my life. Okay. With everyone watching. Hey, shit. Let go here. Pull the trigger. trigger. Check. Yeah. Okay. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I thought that had a kick. Oh, shit. <laughs> really? Adren a lot of adrenaline running. <laughs> Not too bad for a suburban boy. And of course a 12-year-old shows Thanks. me up. Everybody helps see each other and it's so much fun. Because you get to be around guns and nice people. It is just so much fun. Everybody is so friendly. We're just like a second family out here. And whenever a family competes with each other, it's bound to get a little heated. In Enderlin, Brandon Goldner, Fox News. It's something Seth Dye hasn't seen working at First National Pond on Main Avenue. In, in two hours, you know, having two different sets of, you know, Pawnees and come in and try to, you know, it's, it's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. On noon Friday, Fargo police say 23-year-old Matthew Tyler Roback and 27-year-old Christopher Daniel Wilkins Sr. walked into First National Pond trying to sell a musical instrument. They stole a musical instrument had been stolen from uh, an area of business um, just the day before and a shop up in uh, uh, taking instrument. The pawn shop, sensing the instrument was stolen, called police. Sometimes you can tell, and especially when you get a report called in, you know, saying you're looking for some new stuff, some garages have been uh, stolen. Um, we were able to, um, you know, determine that they were, were stolen. The police came and arrested the two men. But just an hour later, three more people, 20-year-old Joshua Michael Miller, 21-year-old Ricky Lynn Croker, and 20-year-old Kayla May Croker, all from McIntosh, Minnesota, were arrested for allegedly trying to sell stolen power tools. We have connected at least some of the tools to three separate burglaries um, around our community. We are work also working with other agencies to see if there's possibly other items that are stolen from other incidences. Two incidents all within a couple hours at the same pawn shop. And if you think those two incidences in the span of a couple hours is crazy, wait till you hear this. There was a third incident that happened earlier in the day when someone walked into this pawn shop and tried to sell stolen items. The people came in pretty early though and the phone call came in a little bit too late so that one did slip by. But Still, five people were nabbed for allegedly trying to sell stolen items. An interesting ending to an unusual day. In Fargo, Brandon Goldner, Fox News. Six months ago, Boris Don came to Fargo where he encountered something different. 
I recently moved away from the cities and the buzzing system over there. We have like four buses that goes on one route. So we have like you know, 15 minutes to wait for each other. Yes, MapBus is small compared to systems in larger cities. But come Monday, bus riders will finally get to experience something close to a big city bus system. Something Transit Administrator Julie Bommelman is advertising as the new MapBus. A system with several changed Fargo bus routes. We are interlining different routes so people will get more one-seat rides, as we call them. That means instead of transferring between two buses to get to a destination, many people will now only have to ride one. A change that will accommodate what Baumann says is a significant increase in ridership. We've more than doubled in the last five years with ridership. Last year it was over 2 million riders in the Fargo Moorhead area. Even the map bus map has a new design with bright colors, easy to read timetables, and logos of popular destinations. Don says all these changes will benefit both him and his fellow riders. But for now, Boris Don can once again experience a little bit of home. One bus route 15, Brandon Goldner, Fox News.